<laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like. All that. right, we're on the streams. <laughs> I use that one. I've stolen that one from Norton. Is it nap time yet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to sleep. Uh, nap time. Isn't, isn't that nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Are you in touch with him? Uh, I Roger? was. Yeah, let me. I'll text him. He said he was in that meeting. No. When? How long ago did he say that though? Um, yesterday, he said he'd be in a meeting. <laughs> well, if I, if I want to talk to him. Before. <laughs> well, I emailed him like an hour ago. When he he emailed me an hour ago, I replied back to him. So let me bug him. Ah, where are you? There you are. Let's yeah. do a little tweet. I haven't tweeted about this. Now. Oh, hey, you come into the show? Uh, you too. What am I doing? <sighs> no admin, WordPress. I don't want to make a new post. Would you like to make a new post? How about a new post? Here, I, <laughs> I wrote Tomorrow morning, and I will. Yeah. Yeah. It was a well, little bit of a Maybe I can wait to tweet until we see if Patrick's coming. Sent this to the right Patrick, right? Yeah, Patrick Norton. Hey, must be the money. Now I got Nelly on the brain. <laughs> That's <laughs> my fault. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You know, you're from the Lou and you're proud. The Lou. I mean, I'm sure that's fine. I I haven't lived there since 1980. Did you ever live in the city proper? No, just, no, I never just, actually lived just in Just Jason. I only ever lived in Greenville. Yeah. So that's 45 miles away anyway. So it's a suburb, but a far one. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, it's sort of like where I grew up. Yeah. It's a suburb of San Francisco. Of San Francisco but it's an yeah. hour away. And it's, it, you here's know, the it's a very different grew, world. It's weird, too, with St. Louis. If you go 45 miles west of the river, you're still pretty suburban, but if you go 45 miles east, you're in the country, or at least right. when yeah. I was growing up, that was true. Uh, it's just more built up on the Missouri side. Well, I mean, how about that? State lines. <laughs> you get those state lines. <laughs> no, California is big enough that very rarely I would ever cross like in well, the Nevada. I was talking in our uh, boss's Slack, I mentioned something about this last week where I'm like, listen, I understand that, you know, a lot of people live in places where it's easy to cross state lines or even cross country lines, right? I happen to be not that far from Mexico. If I really wanted to go, I could go today. He says but, he'll be on shortly. Oh, good. But in general, living in California, you're just used to like... Going to another state is a huge deal. Yeah. You don't just cross state lines. Like it's like no, crossing a state very lines long is, drive or a plane ride. Crossing state lines is what we did to go shopping. Like that's, that was just yeah, a normal like, thing like, for us. Yeah. I'd, I'd be like, I'd go, and to, then uh, go to it's Tahoe. Even, it would be really hard. It's even weirder on the East Coast where, you know, when I went to my internship and I lived in Virginia and worked in Washington, D.C., but some other friends of mine were living in Maryland and you could drive you know, right up to Pennsylvania, Delaware, like, you know, you take an hour long trip and cross six state lines. That yeah, is, really weird. that's insane to me still. Oh, look at Kanye still at it, huh? Oh, good for Kanye. <sighs> well, he needs something to do, right? He should just be himself. He well, is being himself. <laughs> I think he is for better, for worse. I don't think he's ever had, I don't think he's ever not been himself. Just gonna go real. Ahead and leave that one alone. <laughs> so, uh, Sarah has brought up Michelle Wolf and Kanye and then immediately abandoned them as topics each time. Well, it's because I was tweeting <laughs> about our show, and then I'm like, and oh, Kanye is stuff, on a rant, yeah. you know, and then I'm like, uh, oh, just yep. had enough. You know, I am going to close this though because there's right. a little construction outside. We'll give them a couple more minutes and then we're just going to start. We're going to start without all of you. <laughs> No sales tax. Delaware, the state with no sales tax. There's other states that don't have sales tax, like Oregon. Is that New that Hampshire, right? right? Uh, Washington has no sales tax. Texas has no income tax. But doesn't Florida not either? And that's why people love to retire there? 
No income tax. Might be. But the thing, so this is the thing. If they don't take one form of tax, they're going to make it up in another tax. Well, that's the thing. People are like, it must be horrible living in a state with income tax and sales tax. I'm like, you know what? I don't really notice. No. Like, I don't feel like, oh, I had so much more money when I lived in Texas because I made so much less money there. Well, one of the things that people say, like, you live in a high tax state. It's like, actually, no. I mean, California is actually the middle of the road when it comes to that. Like, like total. Yeah. Yeah. To- in terms of taxes. But someone brought it up. It's like, well, you know what? I actually don't mind paying them because my child, as well as my wife, take some take advantage of some of those services. So it's not like I'm just throwing money out there for for no return. Maybe. Hey, must pay the money. Is paying. Well, I will say everything Nelly does really holds up to me. Is 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 Nelly still doing stuff? I don't keep track. No, sadly. No. Well, no, well, no that that I shouldn't say such a thing. I, I I'm talking about the songs that he did in you know late nineties. If you want to run, 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 good stuff. Yeah. Why must I feel this way? Must be the money. Must be. It's all it could be. You know, it's all about that paper, Tom. Paper boy, paper boy, all about that paper boy. Um, are you guys caught up? No, Eileen is. She was she, when I was flying. I got delayed like half hour like yesterday, and she's like, "I'm watching Atlanta." Oh, because I haven't watched last week's yet. I mean, it is. I also want to talk to Eileen about Barry, my favorite show, which we didn't watch last night either. Oh. <laughs> It's so funny. That is the funniest show. I love it. I love it. Um. All right. Anything else, Roger? Have you heard from Patrick? Yeah, I. She said he be on shortly. My apologies. Four minutes ago. Okay. Um. Should we just go ahead and start? Yeah. We'll uh, let him. Drop well, it. I mean, we're going through our quick hits anyway. Well, there yeah. he is. Hey, sorry hey. about that. Oh, there you are. Okay. Just Must in be the money. Nothing says staff meeting like staff meeting. Oh. I like the Windows uh, display. Too. Very cool. Very vertical. Very appropriate for Windows 10 <laughs> April 2018 update day. <laughs> yes, but it's Android. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is? <laughs> uh, you're right. My mistake. If I burst into tears, it's because I find it difficult to... Uh, operate this thing i was in tears earlier today so you're getting good company oh no 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 guys. <laughs> no, no, no. You guys you're making guys. me sad oh, i'm sorry I, I wouldn't say that if that was actually true <laughs> that'd be so weird i'm just kidding <laughs> i just want to you know solidarity sometimes people cry all right <laughs> look it's sideways daily tech news show How's Yay. That? yeah yeah hey. my favorite all right here, we're gonna start i don't know if that's right but it's there <laughs> Works for me. Me too. <laughs> In go. three, two. Sorry. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, April 30th, 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. Keeping the bowels of Oakland, California, I'm Patrick Norton. Yes, indeed. And we are going to talk monitors for you. In a little bit, uh, Patrick is going to help us uh, make a little sense of the alphabet soup that's out there. There's no sense to be made of it. <laughs> Our producer, Roger Chang, has put this all together. Yes. So if it uh, doesn't work, you can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant. But <laughs> you could also get the credit should it go as well as I expect it to go. Case of the Mondays over at Chang. <laughs> Chang. Hey, Chang. Long weekend. <laughs> Got a Long new roof weekend. over his head, but boy, are his arms tired. <laughs> Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Let's do it. Ride Healing Company Didi Shusheng wants its team of automotive designers and engineers to work with car manufacturers to make purpose-built vehicles. The idea would be to design standards for intelligent driving technologies and charging facilities. GAC Motor and CHJ Automotive are said to be collaborating with Didi on this. Didi thinks cars are generally over-specced for ride-hailing purposes. AMD says, 
Oh, Intel, are you delaying your 10 nanometer chips again? We're <laughs> sampling seven nanometer Zen 2 processors, and we're going to say we're going to launch them in 2019. Uh, AMD is also testing a seven nanometer Radeon Instinct machine learning graphics card, it says. And it also says that would be manufactured by TSMC, not Global Foundries. Global Foundries usually does AMD stuff because they spun out of AMD. So that is interesting. Let's talk a little more about a marriage. A marriage uh, that uh, does affect uh, marriage. At, at least 50% <laughs> of the people on the show, Patrick. I don't know who your current carrier is, but I know Roger and Tom both use T-Mobile. T-Mobile USA and Sprint announced an agreement to merge. They are the third and fourth largest carriers in the U.S. at this time. Deutsche Telekom, which owns T-Mobile, will have a 42% stake of the combined company, while SoftBank, which owns Sprint, would own 27%. T-Mobile CEO John Legere would serve as CEO of the combined company, which would operate under the name T-Mobile. RIP Sprint, perhaps. The companies say they will be able to roll out 5G faster as a combined unit, pending regularity, uh, regulatory approval rather, for the merger is expected to finalize in the first half of 2019. Sprint also struck a four-year roaming agreement with T-Mobile that will stand whether the merger goes through or not. Smart for them to be uh, pitching 5G because if they want to get this through approvals, which by the way, AT&T tried to buy T-Mobile not that many years back and couldn't get it approved. What year was that, by the way? We were still doing tech news today. So oh, okay. it was 14 or earlier. It was 2012, 2013. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. um, but they couldn't do it because they said it would reduce too much competition. It's not like there's been more competition added since then. Although T Mobile's trying to say, well, Comcast has a wireless service and Charter has a wireless service. Those, those all rely on the four big carriers to exist, same as Project Phi. Uh, so so saying the 5G buzzword, which the government currently is, is very excited about making sure the US leads the way in 5G is probably a good pitch. Patrick, what do you think of this? Sorry, uh, my Google Hangout just stopped hanging out with me and I heard Phi. Well, that's probably because out. you're not on T-Mobile. Probably <laughs> combined well, T-Mobile Sprint. I mean, I saw. I, I I apologize if I'm repeating what somebody just said, but I looked at this and all I could think was, "Great, just what we need: less competition." Um, and you know, I'm not entirely sure Sprint or T-Mobile can survive long term. Um, I also think if they do merge into one, um, whatever traction we've gained as consumers is just going to slow down. Not that it's been blazing in its speed, but I don't know. The problem I, with AT&T buying T-Mobile, it was a a number. One, num, you know, a top two carrier eliminating yeah. one of the smaller ones. This is the th number three and four combining. What's interesting to me is that T-Mobile used to be number four until they were prevented from being merged into AT&T. And now they're number three. Would the same thing happen if this gets disapproved? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll find out. I'll, I'll be very curious to see because the other thing is the, you know, the regulatory environment in Washington is a touch unpredictable these days. Um so I'll be kind of curious. I, I I don't know. I, I I think also ever since the great Comcast smackdown, um, I think also there there's certainly listening a little bit more than usual outside of the FCC mm. in Washington. So we'll see. Um, Back in the 1990s, Jean-Noël Friedman bought France.com and set up a website for people in the United States who were interested in French culture. He even cooperated with French agencies on its development. One of those agencies was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France, who, in 2015, sued Friedman for control of the domain. <laughs> Uh, in September last year, a Paris Court of Appeals ruled that the site infringed France's trademark on France. And on March 12th, uh, web.com, which was op was was where Friedman had bought the site, uh, transferred the domain to the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now, Friedman has filed suit as of April 19th in Virginia federal court, accusing France and VeriSign, the registrar behind it all, of cyber squatting and reverse domain name hijacking. Ever heard of France.gov, France? <laughs> <laughs> or .fr, your entire domain name you own. <laughs> but, uh, okay. I mean, when we went to sign up for the squad on, all things considered, right? I, yeah, this is, I, I think, I just, I, I admire the man for bringing up the lawsuit. I just don't see any hope of him actually winning this one. Although it would make him really happy if he did. 
Well, it's it, it's it's odd because a Paris court says France gets France.com. What's a U.S. court going to say? This is a French-born U.S. citizen who operates France.com. And I, I mean, there are lots of other situations like this. The first one that came to mind is Hawaii. Uh, our friend Ryan Ozawa out in Hawaii who owns the Twitter domain or the, the Twitter name Hawaii. He has been very careful to use his powers for good so he doesn't get in <laughs> trouble with the state. Uh, so I hope this wouldn't lead somehow to that changing. Well, I don't think he was doing anything bad. I, don't, I think he was, you know, he built up a business. It was a U.S. domain. It was a U.S. business. Uh, yeah, with Friedman, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even a U.S. domain. It's a dot-com domain. That's a worldwide TLD, which arguably that could be what France is talking about. I think Friedman's saying, look, I've done this thing for 24 years. And then suddenly, 20 years in, you decide, oh, wait, we don't want you to use that. <laughs> you should have started whining in 1996 when everybody else started <laughs> yeah. defending their domain names. <laughs> Pre-orders for the Atari VCS open May 30th on Indiegogo. A time-limited collector's edition will feature the classic wood-like front paneling, and the rest will be a ba black version called the Onyx Edition. There will also be packages for a classic joystick, a modern controller. It will have an AMD processor, support 4K HDR, and 60 frames per second gameplay, Wi-Fi, USB 3.0, and Bluetooth 5. Bluetooth 5. Wow, we're up to that already. It will come with more than 100 classic Atari games and be able to support an un unknown, at this time at least, list of popular modern games. Shipping is expected spring 2019. Uh, nostalgia. Is there any limit? No. No. <laughs> a couple hundred dollars gets you something that looks vaguely like a 2600. Uh, or not, if you get the Onyx edition, and can do all the Atari games you can also play in emulation. Uh, I, I, people seem to love this sort of thing, and it's an interesting move to make it a game machine, like a 4K, 60 frame per second game machine. <laughs> I'm very curious what other games it'll support. I'm assuming they're going to be PC games, but maybe they'll be Android titles. I don't know. I, I do like the subhead on the gadget. 4K HDR at 60 frames per second seems a bit overkill for playing Asteroids. <laughs> exactly. Um, and that's why these these list of modern games titles are important, because that's what would take advantage of that. But we don't know what those titles are yet. What yeah. if Asteroids was, you know, rezzed up to be a cool 4K version of Asteroids? Would this make you want to buy this more? It means it's not Asteroids anymore. I know, right. <laughs> there are certain things you just shouldn't reboot. And yet. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's always been interesting because, you know, we've seen, it, I wonder if this is a reaction to like the Nintendo classics that have been coming out the last couple of years or a system finally waking up to, gosh, you know, every time somebody comes out with another one of those Atari joysticks with an entire 2600 inside of it and a, you know, cable to plug into your television, they seem to keep selling them. So it seems like they've finally wised up to the fact that they can start selling this stuff, but you know, it's nice looking, but I, I just, you know, open Linux operating system, join the revolution. And I'm like, um, if steam couldn't do it, how are you going to do it? Although because it, I mean, this it. could be the magical way that it gets done. Right. Is like right. what steam couldn't do nostalgia can. And, and uh, they, the, these folks made one of the joysticks that you're talking about. So they know the, the power of that, of that brand. I'll be interested to see how this Indiegogo does. Okay. Timothy B. Lee at Ars Technica has an article with hopes for people who want to buy graphics cards. I know there are many of you in the <laughs> audience. We have good news. As the price of most cryptocurrencies have been falling, so have graphics card prices. Uh, Lee did a comparison picture from his local Best Buy in January, which had mostly empty shelves where the Radeon RX 570 and 580s ought to be, and then took a picture last Friday where those same shelves are stocked. He also noted that the 580 price tag was $530 in January and is now $420. Uh, and then he went and did some looking at PC part picker and found out that that bears it out. Uh, Radeon prices are falling there, as are NVIDIA card prices as well. The price of Ether has been slowly rising again, though. So some people have been worried if this means the graphic card prices are going to start going back up. But Lee points out that new ASIC mining hardware custom designed for Ethereum, as well as Ethereum's upcoming change from proof of work to proof of stake which doesn't need the processing power may keep those card prices from rising again 
we were talking about this uh, a couple weeks ago. Or we were talking about we were talking about buying. We had a, a viewer was like, "Is it okay to buy used cars that have been in mining rigs?" Uh, and it was fun because we we talked to some friends of ours about that. One of whom who has uh, seventy six GPUs in his garage, and the what? other one who reviews GPUs for a living. He started buying them. He he secured almost all of them before the prices started going up last summer. Um, around the time I was complaining about paying $50 over MSRP for my 1070. Um, but it's been fun to watch. You know, over the last, I've been, I've been watching the, the 1060 price for this short 1060 I want to buy for a system I want to build. Um, they've been steadily dropping for like the last six weeks. Uh, and if you are shopping, check out Newegg. Amazon is often more out of stock faster or with prices that do not reflect the you know, possibly, you know, keep an eye on Camel, 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 but go over to Newegg because Newegg seems to have a much broader supply, even if you just go to Newegg only uh, than Amazon and some of the other online shopping uh, places. Real quick, Patrick, uh, the, the idea of, a, you know, a gently used GPU versus a, a, a GPU that's been used for mining, you know, over, I don't know, let's say a year period. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it was an interesting, it was, it was, it was an interesting kind of series of conversations because, um, you know, the the side A was like, don't buy used GPUs because, you know, most people might game, you know, two or three or five hours a week. And these cards are running full blast um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it turns out you can actually wear out silicon, which is a concept that I find really difficult because that was always the ah, silicon never wears out. Chips never wear out. But you know, chips can eventually wear out. More likely is that a whole bunch of the other components on the mother or the, the PCB are going to be trashed um, because they've been running flat out for so long, especially if there's been uh, poor cooling. Um, the rule of thumb would be, you know, keep an eye out for like EVGA, I want to say, does cards with a three-year warranty versus a one-year warranty. Look for cards that still have like, you know, two years left on a three-year warranty. Um, I probably wouldn't buy used cars off of eBay. Um, I'd be skittish, uh, buying them off of Craigslist. Uh, if I had a friend who was into mining and suddenly realized that he had, you know, 19 cards that were no longer generating him any money and decided to sell them, that person I would buy from, but it's, it'll be interesting to watch because they're already starting to show up, you know, offering third party used on Amazon and other places. And, um, I've seen pictures of warehouses where it's just rack after rack after rack of GPUs and they're, they're all running flat out 24 hours a day. Um. People, you know, uh, I, I I wouldn't pay any, you know, I would pay under MSRP and I wouldn't pay, probably wouldn't buy one if the warranty wasn't still good. This one was only used uh, by a little old lady for land parties with her church group on Sundays, though. So <laughs> That's probably fine. That's what she says. <laughs> China Times reports analyst Ming-Chi Kuo has left KGI Securities for another firm where he's going to focus on emerging industries. Of note, Kuo has been one of the leading analysts covering Apple for years, mm -hmm. often predicting correctly what the company would do. So kind of interesting that he's decided to, I don't know, expand or move on entirely. Yeah, maybe he just got bored with covering Apple supply chains. And, and he's I like, mean, you know, that would be okay if that it doesn't were matter case. how many times I'm right. People just always remember when I was wrong. I'm out of here. I just want to talk about Android for a minute. Maybe <laughs> maybe he's just looking at, at, at Apple's declining influence. I'm going to say that just to get the hate mail. Okay. Um, and, and he's decided he wants to move on to the next big thing. Well, and, and honestly, you may be onto something there where he says, you know, Apple, Apple's predictable now. It's really not that interesting to try to, to guess what they're going to do. I'm going to move on to emerging technologies because that's more unpredictable. That's more of a challenge. Well, and the fact that. that Apple is being more forthright, at least, you know, from a PR a standpoint about, speaking. yeah, yeah. about, you know, what, what's going on and what they're doing and the supply chain and, you know, that the rollout is like, maybe there is less scoop for somebody like Quo, and he feels like there are other areas that he can be an expert in. Although recently there was the whole Apple memo about security that was leaked. So it's, it's not like they don't take security, uh, you know, seriously anymore. But I did find it odd, too, that Mark Gurman's tweet, of course, Mark Gurman works for Bloomberg, famous at having very good sources about what Apple's going to do. Mark Gurman's tweet about Quo leaving was the one that's picked up by everybody because I think he's seen as sort of the heir apparent to like, oh, yeah, but don't worry. If you want to know what <laughs> Apple's going to do next, Gurman's still on the beat. So it's going to be fine. Yeah. 
Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com, available on the Amazon Echo, Google Home, and Anchor app, as well as a podcast. And that are our top stories. All right, uh, Patrick, monitor yep. upgrades. It's something that, that you know a lot of people <laughs> need to do, but you don't always hear people talking about it because uh, it's not something you need to do all the time. When, when should we do it? What do we need to know if you're out there looking for a monitor? Well, okay, first question. Everybody in the podcast right now, Tom, Sarah, what monitor are you using? What resolution is it running at? And how long have you had it? I have had this monitor since I bought it at Fry's in 2013. Uh, so about five years now, probably almost to the day because it was sometime mid-2013. It's a 24-inch HP monitor, and it is running. I'm trying to find the exact resolution. It's somewhere in the 2K range. Um, it's a 60 hertz refresh rate, but I can't find my resolution. <laughs> it's probably 1080p. Do you know if it has an LCD back pan or backlight or a, or a cathode ray or CFL? Oh, no, it's a backlight. Yeah. CFL. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, as you transition from CFL to LCD, the, the, the monitor life gets a lot longer because the thing that used to make monitors dim so fast was the backlighting uh, wearing out. Sarah, what are you running on your, are you using a laptop or a desktop monitor? Well, I'm using a, I'm using my MacBook um, as we speak right now. This is a little bit of an inception situation, but I also have, <laughs> I, I have a nice little windows monitor that um, I currently don't have set up and I'm sorry that it's extremely uh sandy i live at the beach but um but uh but it's it's real nice sorry i'm envisioning you and your desktop and your desktop monitor and your generator going down to venice beach to like land party out on the beach um, uh yeah it's not far from my saturday night <laughs> it's a big party in venice um what's been interesting so i, I i've Hadn't upgraded my monitor in a while, like 2560 by 1440. I've had one for two or three years. And uh, uh, Roger and I were talking. I did a review of a new Dell. They have a new 24 and 27 inch, what they call their ultra thin or S series monitors. And what's interesting about them is, you know, they're very, very thin. They're very, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, but they are super, super thin and using something called Corning's iris glass to attain that thinness. And the weird side effect of that is that you end up with this incredibly even backlighting and it's super super dark and they they've been pushing this whole sort of cinema experience on their laptops and, and desktop environment so they decided to go for a vasa display hdr 400 certification which is not you know if it was a television it wouldn't be very impressive because it wouldn't be bright enough but it's pretty impressive for a desktop monitor and i was looking at this monitor and i hadn't really thought about how old my 20, 2560 by 1440 desktop monitor at home was until i kind of looked at one and looked at the other and realized a how much darker the blacks were on this monitor and b how much better the colors were uh and c um how incredibly even the backlighting was and you know i was looking up uh i was looking up the, the specs um I started to realize it seems like people never upgrade their monitors because when you take a look at uh, Steam, the 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 Steam hardware survey, um, seventy two percent of Steam gaming is done on ten eighty p monitors, like nineteen twenty by ten eighty monitors, and the next highest is like thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight, like old pre seven twenty p monitors or laptops. Um, that's like nine percent, and then another three and a half percent is twenty five sixty by fourteen forty. And it occurred to me that people just aren't upgrading their monitors and. Partially, I can understand why they don't do that in gaming, because when you upgrade your monitor, you probably need to upgrade uh, your GPU if it's an older GPU. If you can't whole... afford a GPU, <laughs> why upgrade the monitor, right? But even before the the, the GPU prices went through the ceiling. Um, and, and the truth is, if, if you can run you know, 1920 by 1080 now, you could buy a new monitor and run 1920 by 1080 on a new monitor if you just went with another like 24-inch panel. Um, but... It was odd to me to, to to look at the specs for this monitor and realize it was like, I want to say greater than 85% um, PCI 3 color gamut, and uh, which means that this $350, $380, 27-inch desktop monitor actually has more colors or has a larger color space than most uh, full-size 4K HDR televisions that were sold in 2017. So monitors are getting a lot better. There's still a lot of crappy monitors out there, but, um, you know, it seems like, you know, you look at like productivity or content creation, um, where I look at like, for me, my sweet spot is an ultra wide monitor. I, I run a Dell, uh, U3415, uh, and programmers and, and 
Excel spreadsheet jockey sit down in front of this monitor and start panting because it's essentially um, 3440 by 1440. And for my programming friends that want that last, you know, few pixels to 1600, I understand you can do that. Um, but you end up with like three columns of information, which is really nice. And then 4K and 8K monitors are really fantastic for people who are doing content creation or if you want to have a massive amount of applications up on a monitor simultaneously. Um, gaming, the higher resolutions are incredibly difficult to drive, especially now because the GPUs are so expensive, even though the prices are coming down. Uh, and then you have to kind of choose like, oh, do I want a G-Sync monitor or a FreeSync monitor? Mostly though, people just want higher refresh rates. Um, that's why I was laughing when you're like, oh, to provide some clarity. And uh, the thing I was laughing about is like, if you're not a gamer, you don't need G-Sync or FreeSync. Uh, if you're not a gamer, you don't need a monitor that refreshes 140 frames per second. Um, it is amazing to look at this, like, you know, the the 24-inch the 1080p version of that Dell monitor, which, you know, I wish it had a vertical adjustment. Um, but it was amazing. Um, the blacks are much blacker than I've seen from an LCD. Um, the colors are very, very accurate, very, very bright. It goes up to like 400 nits, which is pretty bright for a flat, a desktop monitor. Um, and it was amazing how much better it looked than my five-year-old monitors. I think the thing I wanted to, to say. And, since and you how spent, much again? The 24-inch 1080p one is $230, and okay. the 2560 by 1440, the 27-inch one, uh, I think today it's $380. Last week it was $350. Mm -hmm. That's the street price, not the MSRP. So not dirt cheap, but but not no. Yeah. No, I, th I mean, this would be like you know a premium you know, maybe not as premium mm -hmm. as a, as a, you know, an ultra sharp, uh, you know, from the, from the business side of things over at Dell. If, um, you, if you get an 8k, if you get 8k in a monitor, what is that useful for a yet? <laughs> you know, it's, it will one, it'll force you to upgrade your GPU. If you have anything less than a 1070, uh, or did for me, that was, that's how I ended up buying a 1070 last year before everything went insane was I had to upgrade my GPU. Cause I, I could not literally buy anything less than a 1070 and feed an 8K monitor. And I bring that up because it certainly isn't gaming. Um, and it is interesting to have the equivalent of like 20, I guess 16 1080p desktops on one screen, which is kind of crazy when you start realizing just the massive amount of pixels. So you can put a lot of apps up. You can put a lot of apps up, especially <laughs> if, you, if you make them really tiny. But the thing that kind of blew my mind on it was realizing that you essentially end up with a retina display-like experience on this massive mm -hmm. panel. Yep. The pixels at, at 8K, the pixels are so small they are invisible and you know to to use the the robert heron approved term uh it was luscious Just well and, and when, when you're talking about a monitor you're close enough that that can start to make a difference versus yes. a television that you're you know you're sitting 10 feet away from me yeah i mean you know if you're 20 feet away from the television pff, buy a 720p television buy a 1080p television because you can't tell yeah um but it was really amazing to me to be like you know this far from the monitor and you know, like it's like, like that first time you saw a super high res phone display because you're like quad 4K. It's like wow, that's just it's true. You there, know, what I mean, there are definitely those moments where you're like, I just don't care about Retina, and then you're like, oh, <laughs> now I care. Now I do. I can't go back. And then you look at your phone and you're like, oh god, oh, I didn't want to yeah. buy a phone this decade. Yeah. Um, you know, but the 8K monitors are certainly bleeding edge if for no reason than A, driving them uh, is really expensive. But this is like an 8K monitor right now is a $3,700 monitor. Yeah. So, the, so the people buying those are, you know, they're they're working in production. They're early adopters. They, you know, it was they're rich. Yeah, or or you know, let's say you're a you're you're a you're a photographer. You can open up a sure. 35 yeah. megapixel image. If you yeah, um, if you can justify <laughs> the purchase, great. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of people are still trying to figure out how to justify that kind of purchase. Yeah. Well, which brings us to that three hundred and fifty dollar, three hundred and eighty dollar, twenty seven inch monitor where. You know, it's a nice, healthy, but not terrifying jump up from 1080p in terms of because it, it's it's frustrating because I hate working on anything other than my ultra wide now because I've gotten so used to having multiple applications stacked. And then even working on my, you know, you know, working on my laptop, which has a fairly high resolution, still seems so tiny because I can't spread things out the way I do uh, on my desktop, as silly as that might sound. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound silly. There are a lot yeah. of things I still do. <laughs> my desktop. I I can't do it in any other way. I'm feeling cramped just right now looking at my 27 inch monitor and hearing <laughs> <laughs> it's time to upgrade your resolution. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and join in on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash dailytechnewsshow. Always good to get a perspective from across the pond. So let's check in with Nate Langson to find out what's been catching their eye in the UK. Thanks, guys. Well, this week we listen in on Facebook CTOs grilling by lawmakers here in Britain. We've got some essential sound bites if you want to hear some of the angriest moments. Seriously, if you thought Ted Cruz gave Zuckerberg a hard time the other week, you're in for a surprise. Plus, more than a third of all songs on in the Spotify top 50 in the UK now contain swearing. So Spotify is rolling out a trial to filter out explicit tracks. But we look at the wider problem in song lyrics as well, such as violent or sexual subject matter, and discuss ways to tackle this in music, similar to how it's handled with games and movies. All that and more at techpodcast.uk. Excellent stuff. Thank you, Nate. Let's check the mailbag. Let's first email comes from Tyler. This is about MoviePass. We've been, you know, kicking around the idea, like, is this a viable model? What's going to happen with it, etc. Tyler says, I was watch, I was writing in to comment on your movie pass conversation the other day. I don't think it's hard to believe their claims of making profits on a large number of subscribers. It takes me 30 minutes to get to a theater. Then I usually am only able to go on weekends while my wife is at home napping with the kids, right? You know, parents, you you understand that. I waited in incredibly long lines for my card. I had a problem with it after I got it. And then I only have actually used it maybe four times. The, I'm pretty sure it was a month, possibly even two, when I went unused completely, didn't use it at all. I'm sure that their dream customer is not me. Either way, I don't feel special. So imagine there's plenty of people out there that just give them money for no good reason. Although maybe he is the dream customer because he's not actually using it as much as you know he wanted to, but he doesn't cancel a subscription. Also, I remember sometime last year, I think it was in an Engadget article that claimed that J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg, among others, were supposedly all for day and date releases. I feel it's not so much the tech company theaters should worry about but maybe the filmmakers as well. I just love this because Tyler, usually we get the emails saying like, there's no way they could be making money. I have movie pass and I see hundreds of films and Tyler's like, they must be making money because I never use it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Exactly. Exactly. Got another email from Darcy. This is real quick. Uh, this is, uh, we had a really, really good Friday roundtable episode. If you haven't listened to it, please give it a listen. Uh, and Darcy enjoyed it as well. Says love all your shows. But the round table this week pushed me to subscribe to Patreon. Yay! <laughs> it's your shows that I watch and listen to while getting ready for work each morning. Thank you. And then said, eh, lol, because it was all Canadian. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Got that, Darcy. Thank you. That's awesome, Darcy. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, totally. And thank you to Patrick Norton, as always, for being on the show regularly. Patrick, where can people keep up with everything you've been doing lately? They can sneak into my house and observe quietly from a corner. Oh, okay. That How about that would probably be the best way to know your life. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but the children will bounce on you and the dog will eat you. Uh, <laughs> E-K-T-H-I-N-G.com, techthing.com, or avxl.com, which is the podcast I do with Robert Heron talking about uh, home theater and audio gear. Excellent. Thanks. To everybody who is supporting us on Patreon, uh, at April 30th, the last day, it looks like we may end up with about 19 more patrons than last month. You are champions! The more patrons we get over last month, the longer I'll let that tarantula climb up my arm. So by all means, keep I mean, them coming Tom, in. Tom, you know you have to do this. I know, I know. I started to <laughs> wait, wait, how many, how many patrons we need to get the... the to get the tarantula to your armpit. Uh, uh, oh, well, a well. second per patron, let's say. Uh, I don't know. How long does that yeah. look? Let's ask the tarantula what it seconds? wants to do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we need to bring everyone in on the consent regarding this. <laughs> the world's oldest arachnid died this week, by the way. Oh, well, how old was yeah. it? Uh, like 42. What? 43. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I think the scariest part about that story is that I'm actually older than that <laughs> spider was. Yep. Still beat him, Tom. Oh, well. Good work. Good good try. Are uh, e or go. <laughs> no, I was just going to say thank you. <laughs> Patreon.com slash DTNS. Take it away. 
<laughs> Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. If you know an arachnid uh, that is older than 42, we'd really like to know. 43, sorry. Uh, 43, <laughs> even better. We're live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. We'd love to have you join us if you've got the time, but you can always watch or listen after the fact as well. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow, I think, with Patrick Beja. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I, I was fairly yeah, certain we were coming back tomorrow with tech thing and an AVX. Yeah, I don't com. know what happened <laughs> there. I'm today. terribly Look, sorry. I've, I've, I've done that. I've done that thing where you cut and paste twice, and for some reason, the thing you copied didn't copy. So the yeah, last thing you pasted all the time. Yeah. Actually, I put it in there. I wanted more promotion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Clever. We'll be back with Patrick Norton. Mm. So, wait a minute. I guess we will. <laughs> Hold on. Isn't oh he here right now? Um, oh, yeah. Thanks for putting the, the CBS News uh, link in there, too. It was, it was just. 43 year old spider 43 and of course lived in australia yeah of course. well it's a trap it's door and it was the meat yard where all the scary arachnids live the yeah. second oldest other spider animals was i think a uh i think the second oldest spider was a tarantula in mexico city which lived to the ripe old age of 28 apparently <laughs> why do they last me? so long <laughs> they don't usually these are extremely uh, normally i mean eating. things like okay. you know uh, uh parrots turtles uh <laughs> other cute and cuddly animals that live a long time great parrots are not cuddly parrots are cuddly no no you've you obviously never been attacked by a I'm parrot before the bird. Well, you have right, to be i careful. haven't been attacked by one but i've owned a bird you, you have to be careful though parrots are incredibly gregarious birds so you they need to have they like just won't bird shut bird. up <laughs> <laughs> we know what it is they're very needy well, they are they're they're very they're needy and actually get uh is it bipolar it's like one of the human you know they, that reminds well they get story. they get separation anxiety yeah. That's and they start sad. plucking out their own feathers. It's oh, really God. But they live forever. So, yeah, it's like the worst roommate you've ever had. We had that conversation with Seamus. was like, I really want a parrot. I'm like, after you're grown up and move out of the house. But yeah. they're going to live longer than you will. <laughs> uh, speaking of Australia, I will be going there. Uh, and we have some meetups scheduled. Uh, still Why nailing down be? one for May 15th. By the way, all times local. Uh, May 15th uh, is, is going to be in Sydney. And then there is one on May 26th. Good. I need to find the details here real quick. The details are all in the, the monthly post from earlier uh, this month at patreon.com. Uh, but there's good Peter, Pete Wells and Raj Diut are going to show up in Melbourne on May 22nd. So let me, let me get all these details here and then I'll mention it again. Showbot. Dot... Showbot. What? What was the, uh, the uh, URL for the uh, Showbot. Dot chat room. Dot net. Uh, that's at chat realm. Hey, must put a man Sending a big chunk of that to the roofer. Roofer. The roof. So did you get your roof, roof done this weekend? The roof is on no, fire. No, this past week. We weekend. don't need no water. Let that burn. Burn. A lot of, burn. A lot of work to do. A lot of scraping, nails. Did, did you do the prep for it? Me? No. Okay. I had, I'm not going to do it. I don't know. You just talked about scraping and nails. It implied that no, you were scraping I, and nailing. I was, I was implying that because I was sitting under it while they were doing it. <laughs> you were uh, supervising it. the experience? No, doing the podcast while they were hammering away above my head. All right. Um, Melbourne, May 26th, 6 p.m. at Bart Ronica, 335 Flinders Lane with Pete Wells and Raj Dayut. Sydney, Is May Bart 15th. Ronica related to Veronica Belmont? <laughs> What's that? Bart Veronica. Bart Veronica. Yes, it's a it's a transporter accident. I um, hate it when that happens. Uh, yeah. So, um, Sydney, May fifteenth, somewhere down by the Harbor Bridge. 
Uh, it's going to be, there, there's like three or four that we're trying to nail down. Big thanks to David Colville and Pete Wells for helping me figure out uh, where to do that in Sydney. But if you're going to be around Sydney, May 15th, probably around 6 p.m. there as well, uh, somewhere down in that that region, down by the bridge. And more details to come. What are you heading there for? My nephew's wedding. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. he An International travel for a wedding. Well, yeah. He grew up in Greenville, like me. Went to the University of Illinois, like me. But unlike me, went and studied abroad in Sweden, where he met a woman from Australia. And That's one does. Now, he has moved to Australia. He is in grad school for archaeology in Canberra. And they're getting married. Are they getting married? Yeah. Oh, love Go is sweet. Go to the chapel upside down in Australia. Where you should, right, um, yeah, you should where reinforce that if they ever happen. run across any kind of marital friction, that uh, everyone paid a lot of money to come to their wedding, they should work it out. Right. Yeah. If it if it seems a little sideways, lean into how much you had to go through to get there. <laughs> you know what works for me? Think about dating again. <laughs> That's actually the best one of them all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. We we're just like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'll stay. <laughs> I don't want to swipe. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> I can't tell left from right. I never make it on the dating scene. Yeah. I don't want to do that again. Now I understand what those songs mean when they say you spin me around. It's because you're just constantly swiping that you do a full 360. That's what they mean, Roger. Yep. Yep. Especially those ones written before. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Uh, I, I made a perfectly fine joke. Just leave it. You make me right swipe. Uh, maybe right. Speaking of right. jokes, there's a title uh is a good one the end the e uh end graphic violence and then parenthesis or not parentheses parentheses spit it out uh, in gpu <laughs> pricing uh, who monitors the monitor time to upgrade your resolutions the end graphic violence in gpu br <laughs> and graphic pricing. violence oh, just, in GPU pricing. Out the, just the end graphic violence and gpu pricing Yes, I like that. If we drop the the, I'm yeah. into that. Yeah. Sure. Done. Done. The thing is thinged. Sorry, I had to get out here in the last minute, you guys. Oh, it's okay. It was really good. Cool. Yeah, the show was great. Yeah. Uh, totally worth it. It's a delightfully not complex news day. <sighs> yeah, Which, just the, you know, the better for me than for you guys. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I'm actually really curious to see what happens when that goes up to the FTC. Here's the thing. Nobody knows. <laughs> the FTC will probably be okay with it. It's Department right. of Justice that is the wild card. <laughs> and who knows what they believe this week. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, yeah. you know, it depends on what's on their That's plate. why it's why I mentioned the 5G thing, because right. the administration is very pro like US must roll out 5G. So it's real smart for Legere to be out there going, and 5G will come faster. Do you like faster roll out of 5G? Because this will give you faster. Do you like 5G? You do? Great. Give us this merger. Well, Leger is also, you know, the master of being like, here's what you want. Yes. Here's Except what I'm going to give like you. like three swear words to say exactly what you just said. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how he makes it sound awesomer. Mm -hmm. Awesomer. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, what's awesome, uh, this has nothing to do with tech, although it's a little bit of a piece of technology I purchased off Amazon. It has something to do with roofing. After you have your roof done, the roof, buy a magnetic sweeper. They're about 25 bucks off Amazon, and you'll pick up a bucket full of rusted nails. Oh, smart stuff. The last thing I need is a little kid getting stuck. Buy the perfect sweeper. Perfect. Why sweeper. were there so many rusted nails on your old roof? Because that's just how it, like. Yeah. They basically they rip the old shingles off and in the process oh. the they don't do it very good. Yeah. 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 They put it they ripped it down to the rafters. Yeah. They don't they don't slowly rip it collecting each nail. So. Yeah. yeah, roofers <laughs> roofers take Unless out Unless they're the like, violence. you know, yeah, masochistic roofers. Well, what's what's interesting if you go to Amazon, everyone who like, roofer, I guess. 75% of the people who buy those things must get if you have your roof done. Just had my roof done. These things are great. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it does. Did, was there a brand that you that you got? Uh, that you I bought the Amazon 
what's the one amazon's choice like it's like a little scooter it looks kind of like a lawnmower the name is like, amazon's choice or it was <laughs> that's a little black label <laughs> I, I don't know. it just isn't here whatever oh. they're pushing the hardest is amazon well that's choice what i'm wondering or is the it amazon brand that amazon was picking or is there yeah. an actual brand name called amazon's oh, choice now yeah, no sense. amazon's choice can be any of a number of brands that's what i thought wait what's the brand name roger but it is this I don't know. I still know. Master Magnetics. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at uh, that. Magnetic sweepers, tools yeah, to hold and hold them the opera. Yeah. Well, as a third party seller, you can't put it in your trunk yet. Look at that. See, it does all that. Except the nails are <laughs> It rusty. does all that and more. <laughs> 41 inch handle with rubber grip. I it's was going over the lawn. The wax. lawn is the worst because you can't see what's in the lawn. I'm only disappointed that it's not 1999. And it comes oh, in various widths. This is by the company that does the magnet section in, you know, Home Depot and stuff. Oh yeah, which is really a terrifying place There's to take a small magnet children. Section. Oh yeah, in the hardware section, they usually have a big section of neodymium magnets. Well, not big, but like you know, fifteen or twenty different things. So if you decide to craft and you want to make refrigerator magnets. Place to go. Oh, okay, okay. Cause I was like, why is there a section of magnets? Well, there's a Velcro. The Velcro section is bigger than the magnet section. I gotta go to Home Depot. Clearly, see, it's all about home improvement and fetish. Okay, just inner well, right there. <laughs> Making and Burning Man. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm want so magnets? Mad. You want Velcro? I just, I just you go to the desert. Not- Pulling like a, a float with a bunch of people hanging on by Velcro straps, like to a giant furry because, couch. You're thinking, you're thinking of the last Stefan uh, oh. skit that we were talking. <laughs> baby Bok Choy, oh DJ Baby Bok Choy. I'm oh telling my. you guys, Barry is such a good show. It is. It is so funny. I will give it another shot. Just everyone, you should show. go see it if you haven't seen it already, and we'll see you tomorrow with Patrick Beja. Goodbye, video people.